hey, you know what? I could still be really intense and anxious and whatever the hell. But at the end of the day, this is for fun. And they kind of bring that every year, no matter what team I've been on. There's always a couple guys on the team that, you know, make sure that, you know, we're still enjoying what we're doing. We're still in the moment, even though we're not there yet. Excellence is about standing. And excellence is a requirement in the dream of truth. There's a lot of memories. Uh, the one that stands out the most to me, there's two, but the one that stands out the most besides draft day, because draft day was a zoo. Uh, I would say winning the Grey Cup in uh, December, or not December, <laughs> November 2018. Uh, that was my rookie season. That was probably the biggest memory I've ever had of nice. football. Is, there a, is, is this the pinnacle of a sports person or of a, an athlete in the CFL to, to I, I would win? Say, I would say so. Like I, I believe winning MVP or most valuable player, or MLP they call it, or uh, most outstanding defensive player, I think those would be like high accolades. You know, pretty much you're at peak performance of being an athlete. Yeah. Uh, but I would say perhaps winning the whole thing with your team, that's got to trump all the individual accolades. So I'd say that's a pinnacle of a CFL player. That's like the highest peak. There. Nice. Yeah. Is there, a, is there an after? Uh, how do you stay motivated? <laughs> Usually these are questions that come yeah. later on, but okay. when you reach the pinnacle, the, the, the top of what you can pretty much do in the sport, I think it was one year after mm -hmm. you got drafted. Yeah, it was the same so year. It, it's, yeah. Oh, actually, yeah, the same yeah. year. So it's... Yeah. pretty rapid what uh yeah. what is next are you kind of bored already or is it just i'm gonna get more or i'm gonna go to mop mvp and, and reach those yeah steps? so like i that's the that's the thing i remember talking to a lot of veteran players that uh joined the team or left the team or on other teams and one of the first things that they were saying were like hey like you know you don't always get to win oh sorry you don't always get to win a championship in your first year uh and uh that's a challenge in itself it's obviously a very uh successful moment it's kind of triumph it's like a huge triumphant moment but uh what happens though is you, you got to push every single year um you know when you win in your first year you, you might get complacent and believe that every year you're gonna win yeah. but that's not the case rosters change uh coaching staff changes the the theory of the team changes so i think that that all factors in so it makes it actually challenging the rest of your career to go out there and perform and and be a big piece for your team to continue to contend for the championship and yeah It's ensuing years. Mm -hmm. how, how did it start for you? Uh, you were born on the, the west side of Canada. Yeah. Uh, how did you get into football uh, at the beginning? Yeah, so football for me, uh, it started out actually in grade six. Uh, I believe uh, my, dad, my dad and I watched the Rough Riders play Saskatchewan. It's kind of a longer story, but we watched the Riders play. And I remember watching one of the first games. I think it was Labor Day Classic in 06. And I told my dad, I'm like, hey, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put our name on the back of those jerseys. I like that. And he's like, oh, you want to get a Rough Rider jersey? I'm like, no, no, no. I want to, mm. I want to play. I want to like get my own jersey. I want to pay for this jersey. Yeah. I want someone to pay so me for really to wear this up, jersey. I was <laughs> like, I'm gonna play for the Rough Riders. My dad's like, okay. So he's like, all right, I guess this is happening. How so old were you at the time? I was uh, grade, well, grade six. I would have been like 11. Okay. So he, uh, he enrolled me into the RMF. He actually missed the year. Uh, the first year I was supposed to get enrolled, he missed that year. So I actually had to wait till the next season. And I remember showing up uh, in a Carmelo Anthony basketball jersey. He's my favorite basketball player. He's my favorite Since basketball player, too. That's interesting. Yeah, he's my <laughs> favorite. Like Sorry, jerseys of him. Yeah, he's my favorite. And I showed up to practice with that. They're like, Rich, you can't wear a, a basketball jersey over top of your shoulder pads, the big pads. So I remember it was that's where it started. And um, yeah, Regina was basically the roots. There's a lot of football communities there that are strong or getting stronger. And uh, I believe that they kind of anchored my career. So that's kind of where it began. And were you like a talented guy from the get-go or were you um, not? You have to work pretty hard from the beginning. I, think, I, th I had to work pretty hard, but I think that when I, when I look at my career now in hindsight, looking back when I was a kid, uh, God blessed me with a lot of traits that really factor into basketball, football, track, and pretty much anything that I wanted to do. And I felt like that, that was a responsibility for myself to go and hone those skills and become what I was supposed to, right? Oh. So I really thought that I had the talent, but I wasn't that good starting out. I really wasn't, but that was, that was the beginning of me learning that pretty much when I got there. And so, so wh when did you see a switch between you not being that good to, I can actually make it and get my, yeah. my name on the jersey? So I, I remember just like, like, again, like at the start in grade six, I, I didn't really care how good I was or, you know, you know, how, how bad I was. I just knew for a fact that I was going to go do this. You so it never it, really like, was, yeah, it was just in my heart. It. it was hard. It's hard to explain, to articulate, but it was just, I know I'm going to do this. So when I started out, I actually, I would be completely honest with you. They didn't know what position I should play. 
I was on the D line. Uh, I, I was a bigger guy for the kids my age, like I mentioned, but um, what ended up happening was we were just throwing the ball around before practice and they saw me catching and running and they're like, he's more of a receiver than a defensive line. They moved me there and then I was like, oh, this is how I'm going to, this is my ticket. Yeah. Like, this is something that I feel comfortable doing. I'm excited doing this and I feel like I'm helping the team. And that's when I kind of knew, okay, this is how it's going to work. I'm going to play receiver. And did it, was it from the beginning? Um, your ma you said you were 11, 12, 13. Yeah. Did you only have that in mind at that point? Or were your parents okay with that as well? Because it's the moment where you're supposed to be mostly involved in school, yeah. learn stuff, That's and then you know, sport is kind of a side gig. Yeah. For you, were you able to right away make it this your number one goal? I, I, th I think that once I got infatuated with playing football, uh, my grades dropped. I wasn't a great yeah. student once football became like my desire. Now, but not by any means was I like a poor student. But I think that a lot of my focus went towards the sport. And uh, a lot of the times, you know, in class, I'm sitting there dreaming and thinking about this idea I had in my head. And I kind of I held myself accountable to go and make sure this dream prophesizes and that I actually do this. So and that was at a young age. I felt like I wasn't really going to practice to have a lot of fun. I was going there because I wanted to compete and I wanted to see if I can become something with this game. D did you uh, always keep that some sort of a fun part in the game because any yeah. sports any person going to elite mm -hmm. has to start with fun because they want to try yeah and then at some point it becomes like professional you're you have to do it stress anxiety everything yeah did you always manage to keep some sort of fun part in the in the game i, I did because i was surrounded by uh you know younger younger guys younger players that had i feel i felt like they grasped life a lot quicker than i did I think they were a lot more co confident, comfortable, and whenever I was around them, they provided that, uh, you know, that culture of, you know, laughing or joking or, you know, kind of teasing and stuff like that. And I felt like that kind of opened me up to, hey, you know what, I could still be really intense and anxious and whatever the hell, but at the end of the day, this is for fun. And they kind of bring that every year, no matter what team I've been on, there's always a couple guys on the team that, you know, make sure that, you know, we're still enjoying what we're doing. We're still in the moment, even though we're not there yet. We don't have the stats we have. Now I'm playing pro. We don't have the contract we want. It's always good to have the guys that can that, that surround you that can kind of bring you back to life and allow you to enjoy the moment. And these people, are they other players and, and other staff players, or yeah. friends outside uh, of the... Mostly players, okay. I'd say. Cause okay. For you're really with them, and they're going through the same struggles with them. The coaches you are too, but they have their own set of issues they got to deal with. They have to also support themselves like that. And I feel like the support, as far as you know, opening up and being kind of funny and enjoying and the laughter and yeah. the moments that you actually remember later on in life, that your teammates actually provide that for you. And then you they open they open you up. You know, there's a lot yeah. of guys that are tense, yeah. and teammates they can bring you out of that so you're in a comfort zone. And it's it's. It's a funny how, right? It's just it's a team sport, right? But yeah. at the end of the day, it's your career that's on the line when you are receiving that ball once, twice, four yeah. times a, a game. Yeah. Um, you guys are what, 15 on the field per team? Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, 12 per team actually. 12, 12 yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. in the CFL. Yeah. Um, but still, at the end of the day, per play, there's mm. a quarterback that has the ball, mm. and there's m there might be one guy that Other either guys. receives or goes yeah. on the rush or something. Mm -hmm. So your opportunity comes once. Let's say average probably once every 12 times or something yep. like that. Yep. Um, yeah. How, how do you deal with that? The fact that your opportunity comes and I asked the same question to mm -hmm. Brian and Ergin. Yeah. Because I, mean, I, yeah. mm -hmm. I think when you look at basketball, for example, yep. five on the field on every single run, pretty much you everybody will, will have the ball at some point. Yep. Uh, but for you guys, it's completely different. You have one opportunity here and there. You have a nice career up until now. And you look at your Wikipedia, it says, oh, you get X, uh, mm -hmm. X rush, X yards. And you're like, oh, it doesn't seem much on a, on a, on a whole season. But yeah. at the end of the day, you make an excellent, se excellent season, mm -hmm. but still the numbers are low and you don't, you cannot miss yep. the couple opportunities you have. So hundred yeah, percent. Yeah. How do you, how, yeah. How so it's actually interesting. Me and, uh, I noticed Herji also was on a podcast with you, Leo. And I remember him actually talking about that. Me and Herji, we played obviously in Calgary and we shared the same kind of experiences limited touches right there's 12 guys in the field the quarterback touches the ball every play uh, but play designs are you know they're, they're strategized to beat the defense so that doesn't mean everyone's going to get the ball per game five ten times sometimes you might other times and most times you don't so basically seizing those moments 
it comes with the the practice in the off season. Uh, you know, when you're catching passes or running routes, you you're you're doing that in a calm demeanor, but you're also associating game like environment while you're catching the ball, while you're running your routes on air without pads, because you need to simulate as much as you can as if the ball's coming to you in the game. So then once the game arrives, you are more than ready to not only catch the ball, but make plays, make guys miss, and actually benefit your team, you know, get get more yards than you even think you can, just because you've simulated it and practiced it and you've already seen it in your head so many times when you when you practice catching the ball that once you, head into, once you head into a game, that one opportunity or maybe two or three if you're lucky, four or five if you're really, really lucky, those opportunities you will seize. And that's what I've really noticed with this game as I got older. And that's also one of the things that Brian said last mm -hmm. time is like, mm -hmm. you, it's, it's surprise when you're not prepared. But yep. when you're prepared and you've done that mm -hmm. routes or that run a hundred times in practice, yep. You do it during the game. You know if the ball is supposed to land, it's going to land within you know yeah, uh, radius of a couple of meters. So mm -hmm. you know what is supposed to happen. Uh, if you're not ready, it's, well, there, there can be also external factors. Yeah. But overall, you're supposed to be, if you're trained, you know what's going to happen. Yeah. Um, is that also something that has been inside you from the beginning? That um, What's the English for that? that discipline of yeah. you're just repeating over and over for that one opportunity out of a hundred yeah uh, or is it something that you've learned along the way to be disciplined uh, and just repeat, repeat, I th repeat i think discipline is definitely learned uh i don't know if there's a human on earth that's put on earth that just is all, all of a sudden just discipline i believe that um it's something that's learned and it's something that needs to be maintained in every aspect of life and that's supposed to look like a struggle uh as far as the opportunities when you when you're younger before you end up playing football you're you're dreaming of scenarios of catching the ball sometimes like when i'm walking around the house i dream about like if there's like a line on the ground i believe i'm catching a ball before that line almost as if i was on the field and there was a white yeah. line there and that to me associates a lot of imagination which is exactly why i ended up playing this game because in my head i saw myself doing this saw myself doing that So as you do that, imagine, once you practice, you continue actually imagining scenarios of you catching the ball, scenarios of you getting in the right zone or being in, this, in sync with the quarterback. Once that clicks, you're just playing football. You're, you're running, catching, running, catching. And that's when you start to see these uh, athletes that have incredible numbers because they're so good at associating their imagination to reality and how they're able to play. Uh, with ideas in their head and how it looks like if the ball lands over here instead of there. And those players typically have an elevated performance level. And they're the ones that you see with the higher numbers, the higher statistics, because they're able to associate the two better than the other players. And not only that, they're disciplined and they work hard to make sure that there's no gaps in their game. That's, so that's kind of the, that's the that's battle. Awesome. So yeah. do you think that part, the mm -hmm. visualization, the yeah. whole theory, what's in your brain is yeah more important in a sense than your actual physical and capability of course you need to be fast and yeah. you need to be yeah. whatever uh, but is if you had to pick one mm. if you had to pick the physical part or that the mental part that you could improve by 30 percent overnight which one would you choose i would i would choose the imagination and i know it doesn't sound you know uh, like i mean obviously it doesn't sound ideal but if you think about it carefully um where the mind goes the body follows So if I believe that if I work at, you know, this skill or if I believe that I, if I work at um, catching and running and catching and running, that's all in my head, my body's going to follow that train of thought. So now I have something to work with when I go train because my body's, my mind is telling me catch, run, catch, run. So then when, when the game arrives, I practice that so many times. My mind has already seen that and my mind's beating it into my brain. That's what you want to do. So when you catch them all and run, it's just second nature because you've already processed it mentally. Is it, is it, you mentioned also the alchemy with the, mm. the quarterback. Yeah. Is that something that's as crucial in a sense? Because you also in your career had to change teams pretty often. Yeah. So you have to, well, learn the whole staff, learn the whole team yeah. and the quarterback and all that. Is that, does it just add to the, the quantity of work or is mm -hmm. you yourself the main part and then you can basically plug to any other uh, player and, and kind of be in sync with yeah, them. Yeah, I think that, I think there's like no real right or wrong answer. Cause I've been on some, I've had like, I mean, when I look back at things from college till now, I don't know how many quarterbacks I've had. So one thing that I've learned that's consistent is, yeah, you want that chemistry to be, to exist. That's the ideal situation. 
having that chemistry with a quarterback. He knows how much strength to put on the ball. He knows that you're going to be here when he has a hot or he knows when he's rushed. He knows you're going to be there. He knows what passes you're going to catch downfield. That's always great. But I think that the individual itself has to be able to to perform regardless of the chemistry, regardless of the, you know, the camaraderie that you have with your quarterback or your passer. Mm-hmm. Because what if that passer goes down and now you have a backup? Well, if you relied on that chemistry for all that time, which has happened in my career multiple times, so many times I can't even remember, the starting quarterback or the guy that I've built a rapport with isn't there or isn't around. Now I'm learning how to build chemistry with a backup quarterback or you know, with maybe even a third string quarterback or a brand new quarterback that we haven't uh, played with. And I think that what happens is it comes down to how good is your skill level and how good are you at adapting? I think that's mostly what life is because, yep. you know, it throws so many scenarios at you. If you can't adapt and you get complacent with what's normal to you or what's consistent to you, you may not be able to perform with a new quarterback. And in this game, you have to be able to show up. So that's kind of how it works. Crazy. How mm-hmm. many uh, plays do you have in a, a basic playbook? How many oh. things do you have in your mind that you can pretty much on a one signal kind of execute and and put your imagination yeah. on the field not to go too super deep here but, no, no, but I, yeah, of course i always probably. thought no 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 like i always thought you know of myself as being a more knowledgeable guy than a than uh the best athlete on the field so when i look at how many plays there are with for one position there uh in a whole playbook i remember our playbook being like i don't know for reference like this big pretty much everywhere i've been they're all full of pages and terminology so the plays probably 120 plays um, for one position. But if you learn concepts, you learn, you know, you learn a little bit about the teacher, which is the coach and how they have a rhyme or reason for certain concepts, 120 plays really turns into 60. And I don't really know how to explain that properly, but if you understand con- conceptual thinking, that it's not so much, oh, these are different plays, I have to remember 120 of them, it's concepts. They give you names that can give you a rhyme or reason so you can associate what needs to be done to execute the play. So when you do that, also with myself, as I mentioned, I wasn't the most athletic, but I definitely think I was knowledgeable in every every scenario that I was in uh, as far as understanding the playbook and uh, being able to play multiple positions just because of that conceptual thinking. It helps. It helped pretty much my entire career as I didn't have a stable position my whole career, and I still don't. Uh, my best asset is being able to back up all the positions in case we have an injury. We have someone that can that you can rely on that's knowledgeable and that understands. Okay, this is what the coach needs. This is what we need on this play. So that's yeah. it's, it's insane. Yeah, um, it's about like 120 plays. Yeah. So out, yeah. outside of. Mm-hmm. Uh, when, I mean, when you're not with the team training and all that yep. at home mm. are you like a student sometimes just opening a playbook and just rehearsing stuff over and over is that what yeah. a pro yeah, player has I, to I do would, I would say so with conceptual thinking and then having like good memory I think that you know I, I, I study the things that I'm not that don't click as well in, your, in my brain I think um, that's what uh, <laughs> I think that there are times where um Uh, sorry, I lost my train of thought there. I think that I, I utilize the, the, the gift that I have of just being able to conceptually think and have memory associated to mm-hmm. that. So pretty much just like a student that's studying a last solution or a last uh, formula that they need to, they're not, they're not quite sure yeah. of. That's kind of how I go about studying when I'm outside of football. If I don't know something, I'll go into the terminology, the, 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 back, the back page, try to figure out, okay, Why am I, why is this not clicking? How come I can't rhyme this reason so I can conceptually think of this and then present it on the field? So that's kind of how I deal yeah. with that. So is it a personal step, something that you really do on your own or do you have like, some yeah. uh, trainer, uh, trainers that are not necessarily like football yeah. uh, coaches? Oh, you have like right. a, external people that just help you on oh, no, no, conceptualize definitely. everything? Is I like to like do it personal? on my own kind okay. uh, of. A lot of guys, thoughts. yeah, they do like cards and stuff. I, and I, I, any way that you can, you know, learn or memorize or get something down or whatever, do it. But I think for myself, I just like to do it by myself because I like to talk to myself while I do it. So then when I'm on the field, I don't have someone talking to me most of the time telling me like, hey, remember this, uh, you know, this is part of a reptile family. So that means that there's this kind of variation in these kind of, uh, you know, in this reptile family, which it doesn't make a lot of sense to you. But there's terms like snake is snake could be a play. So if there's terms that are associated to reptiles and, you know, that family, it gives you a little bit of a, 
you know, a little bit of understanding of what might be called or what might need to be done on certain plays. I don't really want someone to test me or quiz me or sit down with me and work through that. I need myself because on the field, that's all I have. I can't go, hey, can you help me out? Like I have to be able to know that's my job. So I like to do that on my own there. Nice. Yeah. And, and all of this, I mean, that's why I love the podcast uh, mm -hmm. so much is all this stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, people that know football yeah. um, very much, they kind of know that, but yeah. they don't know it that deep that you yeah. are that connected inside. Like there are so many stuff <laughs> yeah, in your brain happening when, yeah. when you look at what you see on mm -hmm. TV, you're like, okay, so they call a play, mm -hmm. they do it and then you know, they start over. Yeah. So that's amazing. Um, when you started, probably that wasn't um, a thing, right? You probably no, had to yeah. say, you said throwing balls, catching it, it and that was it. Yep. Um, when does it get more serious and more like technical like this? Is it college um i uh college sometimes in high school uh i think for myself in high school when i hit like grade 11, 12 i'd say the complexities of the playbook started to come about okay. because in grade 12 you're you're developed to a point where now you can start to see the gaps between talent and all players okay. and i think that the talented players that i played against in high school they dealt with the same transition of catch the ball run or run this route run that route now they're like hey if you get this coverage we need you to adjust and maybe run a like a spat or like a speed out or if you get this coverage maybe you can break in which gives you the liberty to associate recognition play recognition and then being able to react whereas for most players they give you a play and that's your play and that's it I think that the, the more talent you present, the more responsibility you have for the team to help the team because you're capable of doing those things. So I think around grade 12, uh, university was also pretty challenging. I had multiple offensive coordinators. So they're the ones that actually draw the plays and call the plays. I had a lot of changes with them. So it was a lot of relearning how to learn a playbook. So yeah. I had a lot of practice and learning how to, okay, you don't know anything, learn. So I had a lot of that kind of practice go on. So I think I would say just a long, long answer. Grade 12 no. is when that happened. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good. Long yeah. answers are good. Yeah. Um, when you, um, when you get to that level and yeah. you start, cause I think you played two, uh, in two college football teams, yeah. right? Two. Um, yeah, you got it. So start changing a lot. Yeah. Uh, then you you got drafted and then you also got transferred. Yeah, had a bit of a, a time in the U.S. Then came back here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's a lot of changes. Um, do you feel like so far you had the opportunities that you deserve for all the work you've put in? And if you got them, you think you've executed properly or or done what you, everything you could? So yeah. and this brings to the question of like the just the toughness of sport of elite sport mm -hmm. and. Uh, something I like to compare it to is business because that's what I'm in. Yeah, yeah. It's you work so hard sometimes towards something that you think is going to work and then just something completely external that you didn't see mm -hmm. is coming your way and like, oh, everything changed. So oh, refocus and you know you have another year of hard work to get to that point. So for me, that time it is a long question. But that's yeah, okay. how, do you, okay. uh, how do you deal with, with these stuff where you seem to be super organized, counting very much on yourself. Yeah. But when some whatever factor come in, comes in changes mm -hmm. the whole plan and you're you're transferred not knowing you will be transferred you get into the u.s then have to come back here all those stuff just yeah. coming over and over again how do you oh it's, keep the mental up? it's a challenge and i, I remember just like uh there's a quote i kind of forget who who put that in my brain but it was uh it, it relates to football it's when in doubt a different route and football when you're a series run routes so it's like kind of that like it kind of ties into that so it related to me when I heard that because most of my career, if you started out from literally my first year of football, it was changing teams probably every year, okay. uh, approximately every year. So with that being said, it, it's it, 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 the opportunities come and go. Uh, I think if you ask me 20 years from now, <laughs> when uh, I'm probably distant from the game from as far as playing, I'd be able to give you a proper answer. But uh, I'm a man of God, and I think that the opportunities I got were the ones that God wanted me to have. And if I think that they were a lot, or if I don't think that they were a lot, uh, that's my own problem. But if, if I realize that God will only give me what I need to have and, and what I need to have, not what I want to have, everybody wants a ton of opportunities in football, especially everybody wants the ball 10 times a game. And, uh, I, I, I think I was one of those guys where you get tied up. Like you said, 
you're very invested in your work and yourself when you're playing a pro pro sport or anything in this world, business, um, even a podcast, you want to perform at your best. You want the most opportunities to do the, what you do the, yeah, your best. And I, I think that you have to recognize that everybody's trying to do that. And I think that sometimes you only realize that when you're older, like I am now in my career, where you start to realize this is the gravity of the game. You get your opportunities when you get them. And the more you try to fight to control that, the more you, you get out of whack. And I've experienced that in my own career, lots, where um, I'm focused on when is my opportunity coming? When am I getting this? When am I getting that? Oh, that stuff isn't in my control. So I think that that's, that's part of the challenge of playing pro. Like you said, this is your job. Yeah. The more opportunities, the more you, you, know, you get to amplify that experience in this career field. And I think that the biggest thing is finding the balance of I need my opportunities. And, the, and then the other side is this is a team sport. I can't, I can't, uh, I can't demand more for myself to the detriment of this team. Yeah. And I think that that's the hardest pill to swallow playing any sport. And I'm going to say sport specifically, cause that's all I really know. That's the hardest challenge. I think one of them for a lot of players. So, and it's also a business at and the it's end also of the day. Business. So yeah. for yeah. you, it's yeah. your job, but mm -hmm. it's also for mm -hmm. the front of his team. It's just that the name of the team yeah. gets up there and it's playing with, yeah. playing with players or shuffling players around and, and transferring 100%. them. hundred percent. You have to realize you're a part of that organization. So the title of the team, you're a small part of that, but you can be a big part of that if you play your role properly. Yeah. And I think that for myself, like that's something I had to learn so many times in my career. I think a lot of players have to learn that a lot and maybe they don't want to admit it, but it's, it's hard to realize that you are that piece to the puzzle. And I think that in 2018, when I was able to hoist the great cup with a, with a number of teammates that I grew to love in my rookie year that welcomed me as a young 22 year old, um, I realized I was like, Oh, this is what it looks like. Play your part. And then years came by and I was like, no, I want my opportunity. Yeah. So it's a tough battle to do that. But once you realize, okay, this is a success that comes from you, you know, like shutting up and just allowing whatever to play out, play out, you get rewarded like that, like I did in my first year. So it's something that's coming full circle right back to that. And I'd love to win it again. But again, it's realizing that you're a small part of that organization. Yeah. But you've tasted that, tasted you know, that yeah you victory. taste blood you want more kind of well, thing here, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maybe blood. Uh, yeah. but you've tasted it once so you want it again right it's been mm. six years now or five and a half years yeah so what is every single day you wake up and you're like i'm going to training or six days a week yeah what is that north star that helps you keep going for six consecutive years where you're probably putting your your um, buddy at amazing yeah. i remember toughness. i remember um you know having like a hard practice and like kind of kind of going through and I remember talking to actually the quarterback for Hamilton when I was there Taylor Powell he just kind of he he's a younger guy but he had he, like there's you find you find wisdom in a lot of people and one of the things that he said he's like what what would the what would the eight-year-old Richie want from for Richie and it's out of the blue uh, it was out of nowhere I, I don't know why he asked that it's usually and, a question one of the questions that I sometimes ask at the end of the podcast, oh, yeah, so yeah, you answer yeah. it right away. Yeah, <laughs> what, I won't what, answer, what, what but he it? just asked me that, and it just, well, I guess I'll answer it, but it just made me think. I was like, what the hell is he asking me? And I, I sat down on the bench, and I was like, oh, yeah, I never thought about that. And that's the why. Because the whole time you're pushing towards something, you kind of forget what the younger version that actually planted the seed for you to do what you wanted to do is wants you to do. Yeah. That eight-year-old would look at me today and be like, whoa, like so that, cool. this all worked out the way I said it was. And it's like, geez, let's keep it going. You know what I mean? And that, I didn't, it didn't never really hit my mind. I mean, I'm 20, I was 28 at the time. Never, never considered that. Never did because you're so invested in what you're doing. You're like pushing and going, but you forget, sometimes you forget that why. Mm -hmm. it, I won the great cup in 18, but that, that wasn't, that wasn't my why. The why was way back when I was eight years old. And I was like, hey, I want to try this. Let's see what this looks like. Yeah. So I think that's that's kind of the that's what drives me. That's like the that's like the that's the vehicle that you you run on. And then what happens is as time goes on, you, you run on fumes and then eventually there's nothing more on that. But you could you leave the game understanding that that was what you wanted to do. And I think that's a success in itself, regardless of how your career went. So And since yeah. that realization that 
you had pretty much achieved what eight-year-old uh, Richie wanted yeah. to achieve. Yeah. Have you felt a difference in how you play? Like maybe playing more f free? Uh, F yeah. Feeling more free oh, in the, the way like, you operate? <laughs> you almost... I, like, I mean, I like to look at things realistically at times. Like uh, When I look at this, it's like, man, I really wish I considered that most of my career. My career isn't over yet. But when I look back at years that I was playing, I'm like, man, if I keep this mindset of um, this is what eight-year-old Richie would want and this is what life looks like now that you're a grown man and you're in a grown man environment, a grown, a grown business, um, you – you kind of lose train of thought of that. But yeah. if you can consider and keep in touch with that young version that started this, this train that started this journey, I think that, I think it propels your, your level of play because you, you care less the pressure of the one opportunity that you get or two or three that shrinks down to nothing because you're like, well, when the opportunity comes, I'm going to go crazy because <laughs> that's what eight year old Richie wanted me to do, or that's what eight year old, whoever wanted me, wanted you to do. So I think that it's, it associates so much on the field as far as how you, you conduct yourself and that anxious and the, the nerves and stuff. It kind of takes that away a bit because you're, you're not looking through the lenses of this guy that's been, that's been created, that you created. You're looking at the, through the lenses of this is what the eight-year-old version of me wanted. And somehow, some way, I was lucky enough to do that. So why don't I just do that, you know, yeah. instead of worrying about – you know the what ifs or oh this is my only opportunity because yeah. that's when you crash yeah and you can you can always get better and mm -hmm. most actually olympians that i talk to mm -hmm. i would say 90 of them they said that they reached their best results when they either figured out that you know what i did what i had to do now it's yeah. just back to 100 fun no yeah. more work and pro and I, i have to yeah or that they actually got that to that they had that medal that best time whatever like oh Now it's like I'm it's, free yeah. and you kind of probably some tension goes away mm -hmm. and you just act just almost random. Like the probably with the mindset of the eight year old where yeah. you have nothing to lose because you, it's not that you don't care, mm -hmm. but you don't take it that seriously. Anymore. Yeah, you don't associate uh, your worth with that, which is something yeah. that I think a lot of players struggle with and quietly because, I mean, it's not something that you're even sometimes aware of. I didn't that didn't reach my awareness till probably 2021 after COVID when I came yeah. back, I was like, man, why am I like, why am I associating my worth to this game? You know what I mean? Like, I think that because it becomes so much of your identity, like I said, you're eight years old. You're like, this is what I'm going to do when you're, when you're playing, you're like, this is who I am. But really it's a part of who you are. And it's something that you do really well. And in order to do that, you need to put work in and you need to put lots of work in and more, more than you think. And then that's, that's what this part of your life is. And I think when you keep it within that kind of, Uh, context or that relationship, your, your level of your level of play skyrockets. I know guys that, um, you know, maybe aren't as athletic. They they don't look like they're the part, but they're yeah. some of the best players I've ever seen. And I can tell it's it's a lot to do with their demeanor. They take harsh criticism better than a lot of players. They uh, they they they're coachable. They understand things in context of what's going on in the field, but they can also associate positive vibes, positive gestures that keep them going and keep them connected to that young version. And I think those are the best players. And when I look at myself, I'm not saying that I didn't do that, but though that's been a struggle for myself and maybe a lot of other players that I maybe don't know about. And I think that that's the, that becomes most of the challenge when you uh, go pro because the more connected you are to that version of yourself and the more you can associate those positive, you know, not careless, uh, demeanors, but the, the, the not do or die demeanors. I mm -hmm. think those are the people that perform the best in sport. And these are, is, are they, uh, are these sorry, stuff that you now discuss with your, your teammates and maybe younger, uh, recently drafted, uh, people to just, You're, you're 28, but yeah. you're the wise guy probably in the team now. Yeah. Uh, on the other side of older side of the, the spectrum, the or are these side, stuff yeah. that you uh, that you try to kind of um, tell younger younger just, people? Just like last year, I started to look at guys that were entering the league, or maybe guys that came from south up here. Um, I can I like I can see it in their eyes what I had in my eyes when I was 22, and I'm like, oh yeah, I'm like I'm getting old. <laughs> but at the same time, I don't want to overload them with information. But there's the it's like that urge to like, Hey, like I know like playing pro, like you're up in Canada or 
you played Canadian football in college. Now you're here. Now you're here. And I just want to like be able to tell them the, the triumphs of my story, but I also really want to key on this, the, the failures of the story. So they know, Oh, okay. This is a, this is a teeter tottering effect. You know, this is, this isn't just going to be a straight line. I'm going to play well. I'm going to get on the field. I'm going to get paid. We're going to win great cups. It's more of a, there's going to be turmoil. There's going to be turbulence, all those things. And there's a way to brace for it. And there's a way to, you know, to, uh, Oh, wow. That's crazy wind. Suddenly yeah. <laughs> there's, there's ways to, there's ways to deal with it, uh, uh, better than what you might know at your age. And as an older player, sometimes I want to go do that. But at the same time, you want to let them figure it out too. Like that's their yeah. journey. They did, they put the work in, they got drafted or they went to the NFL. It didn't work. They came here. Let them figure that out. If they need your help, be there. Because I ha- if, you, if you have help and you know you can do it, I'll always do that. So when players do come to me uh, that are younger, I try to tell them more of the faults or more of the mistakes that I've made just so that they know, okay, when I make a mistake or when I, um, when I don't feel my best in this game or when I don't feel like I understand where I fit in on this team, I'll refer to what Richie taught me about, you know, about his journey and how he had to learn the the hard way or learn the right way, or maybe he already knew there's certain ways to approach situations. So I like to share that. Nice. So you seem to have like so much wisdom as if you were retired and looking back on uh, 50 (laughs) years earlier, but you're still playing. You're with the Argos now. Yeah. Um, You resigned recently. Yeah. I resigned. Yeah. Two years. Mm -hmm. Uh, Very good. Congrats. Congrats. Thank you. Um, It's rare. Two year contract, right? Brian was saying, usually you have a three year career and you have like one year contract. That's two years, it. yeah. Very nice. I, yeah, that's true. I, I was told that uh, typically, I think the – I remember laughing at this. I don't know. Someone told me it was the typical Canadian Football League career is about two to three years. And I yeah, just said, well, I'm not thing. playing two to three years. <laughs> like, that's – I'll – like, you know, that's not happening. And I think uh, I think it's, it's a blessing to be able to play this long. And um, it's nice now that, you know, I'm in Toronto right now. This is probably where I want to end the – like, finish my career off. I'm with – two coaches that uh that actually were part of the process in drafting me okay. they were in calgary when i was there and we actually won a great cup ball together so it kind of went full circle those guys uh excelled in their careers now they're you know they're running the show here uh in dinwiddie a guy that also vouched for me to be drafted when i was young and uh when i was about 21 years old he said hey no this kid could probably be pretty good and I think that that now, now that I'm 28 years old, I'm like, that's a guy I want to play for. You know, you want to be around people that saw a bunch in you when you had nothing. Yeah. And I think that that's important to me. So I'm, I'm highly motivated to go out there and play for him. So what would be, uh, again, success for those, uh, those two years, uh, here in Uh, Toronto. So the success, it, it looks different to me. I think that, um, depending, like, I always like to look at the way the season's going. Uh, instead of like setting these like egregious goals, I like goals. I like those, but I like to set, uh, like, a I don't know, like, a like a, a mental standard or like, a, a team standard as far as how we are going to adjust yeah. to the turmoil that we're going to deal with no matter what, because if you adjust for that early enough and not have these, we're going to win the great cup this year, those kind of goals that are very good, they're great goals, but those aren't those aren't goals that you're going to see day to day and day to day, day to day. You're going to see a bunch of struggle. Guys go down, guys uh, get cut, um, guys perform poorly, or uh, maybe we call bad plays late in games or whatever it is. Those situations are actually the goals. You want to be able to handle those goals, those situations. Mm -hmm. Good. That's my goal this season. We handle those situations. Well, you win a lot of games and I've seen that. I think in um, 2018, we had like a losing skid heading into the playoffs and we we were winning pretty much the whole season. I think we were seven and zero to start in my rookie year, and I didn't know what losing looked like. <laughs> and then once I saw what it looked like, I was like, "Oh, it's not about winning the Great Cup. It's about dealing with this kind yeah. of crap, like the poor play. It's about dealing with that, fixing it as quick as you can. Because if you don't, it doesn't matter what your goal was at the end of the season or what you guys yeah. were looking for, or even your individual goals. That will all go out the window if you don't have short term goals that kind of tally up into this." pinnacle where it's like going to the great cup like that's that's what you want but these little goals they don't get achieved you're not going there you're never going to go there it's like uh, that basic saying that says the goal i mean the goal is not 
the end result is like the journey yeah you have to enjoy the journey and all those yeah. shit storms that happen that happened, all day yeah. long and like and then you'll, you'll enjoy whatever comes if it if it, if happens. it comes yeah and I, I tell you like i'm telling you i'm pleading with you it's just you never know what's gonna happen like i had seasons where the star quarterback tears a shoulder and never been injured before, like never has been injured. And then not only is it tearing the shoulder, but it's throwing shoulder. So you don't even know what his, what is, what he's going to, what he's going to do when he comes back. And I think that, um, I think that, you know, the coaching staff was definitely prepared for it, but the, as players, we didn't respond properly to those situations because yeah. we're looking at it like, Oh, we have him check. We have this person check. Yeah. Well, what about health? That could be a goal. What about contingencies? That could be a goal. And I think that um, adjusting to those situations as players helps coaches kind of feel like, hey, I have a team here. I have guys that are men that are like, hey, listen, whatever goes on, we are going to figure this out. And that's kind of been the motto actually out in Calgary. I, I've been there where guys get hurt left and right and somehow, some way we are, were able to compete when I was there. So I think it comes down to those short-term goals that all add up into that you know, pinnacle where it's like, hey, now we're here. So. Yeah, sweet. Um, how many more years do you think you have in you physically, mentally, and assuming you can get as many contracts as you want? Yeah. How many years do you think you oh, have in yourself uh, left? Um, tough question, actually. Uh, I honestly, you know, with signing the two-year deal, I never really signed a two-year deal before. I was always on one-year deals. Um, I think it's, it's uh, natural to do the one-year deal as a receiver just because you don't know what the roster is really going to look like year to year. Yeah. I think a lot majority of receivers would like to do two years, but um, if it's lucrative financially or if they see themselves, you know, prospering in that organization. But I signed with two, I signed two years and I think that's kind of the goal to play these two years. And uh, that would be probably it for me at okay. 30 years old. I want to move into next new feats, new, uh, new energy, and then plant that seed like I did when I was eight. Okay, this is what I want to do. And Let's so start it. What is next then? Next After steps. Football? Yeah, like, uh, you know, it's interesting. I was always told never share your dreams or goals, but huh. I'm not scared because if it's, if it's what I want to do, it's what I want to do. I've been looking into, um, you know, lately when I moved out to, to Toronto, I was trying to get into tech spaces to get into like tech sales and stuff like that. Um, and the, those are like smaller feats that I like, but the big one is I actually caught an eye a couple of years ago for wrestling, like pro wrestling and like, uh, like kind of like, you know, WWE or whatnot, yeah. uh, indie wrestling, which is like independent circuits and uh, developing character and, and, you know, actually getting, uh, primed so then you can go make a run at it which is another new journey, you know. On so, yeah, it's a whole, it's not like a chilling stuff, like just, no, no. I, I'm not saying, I was about to say coaching <laughs> or just getting a yeah. nine to five. It's always like pushing the boundaries and trying to get better, but it's yeah. another like elite level. Yeah, another like, elite level. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and like, why not? I think it's, I think it's important to, you know, I, something like that scares me, but also Exciting. gives me that fire. I think that that's, well, I'm going for that. Like, you know, you live once, And I think that, um, you know, you can, you can choose to, you know, do whichever you makes you feel comfortable in life. And I, I like discomfort. I like to, you know, year in, year out feeling that discomfort, but then also feeling like, Oh, I took these steps in this quarter of the year. I took these steps in that quarter of the year. And I think that that's never, that's an everlasting challenge that I, I always want to have. So it's a new feat. It's something that I'm, I'm intrigued by, but Where I am right now, football is all that matters. And I feel like playing for the Yargos and delivering for them, I joined them probably with three games left in the season last year. I want to put together a whole season of being that kind of that old guy, that vet, but that still can play because I know I still have game. I still have speed. My joints are good. Um, I still think that that's all there. I, I truly believe that. I can see it when I train and when I play. Uh, but – I do believe that there's a certain point in time where you got to know when to put the curtains down and yeah. when to walk away. Uh, that's the, oh, that's the most important thing. I think sometimes in life, understanding when it is your time to leave. Yeah. So I think that's, you know, these two years would probably be the, the last two of my career. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, so you already answered one of the questions mm -hmm. I sometimes asked, which was the yeah. eight slash 10 year old yeah. you. you. Uh, so another one sometimes yeah. is if, um, if I were to tell you now that I'm, actually wrote a book about your, your life mm. and you had to choose only the title of yeah. your book. What Ooh. will be the title of your book or your life story? Oh man. I, ex I have oh, high expectancy good, with your, that's with a your mindset. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
I'm, uh, I feel like sometimes I get creative with titles that I overthink it. So you're saying a title of a book, uh, your book, I was your last story. Book, yeah. 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 Um, I would say, uh, <sighs> complexities, something like that. Just kind of a, a cliche one in my mind. Okay. I think everybody deals with complexities. Every single person. I don't care what you're doing. I don't care if it's small, little, if you're working at, as a cashier, you probably still have complexities. I'd say complexities. I think that, um, I had to make a lot of decisions, uh, kind of like, like kind of life altering decisions within two years. You know, we're talking like moving, like moving from Regina to Calgary with nothing but $600 in my pocket. Yeah. You know, just, I'm going to try to chase this football dream and that's, that worked, you know what I mean? And then there was changes, you know, I got cut from the Stampeders after I was drafted, went back to school, then made the team. I think that there was complexities and opportunities for me to quit a lot. There was so many opportunities almost to the point that I didn't really ever think that I would ever think about quitting, you know, when I was 23 or 24, younger, younger, even like when I was 17, you know, there's obviously there's, there's moments where you have doubt. Yeah. And I think that it becomes complexity when you're fighting with yourself to be able to perform. And then you're also, um, you know, you're fighting with yourself because you're like, am I good enough? Am I, am I doing what I'm supposed to be doing? Is this working? And I think that that's why I'd say complexities. Because there's just so many different nuances that are uncontrollable and they just pop up and you have to deal with them. So I think that's kind of how I'd I'd say a book title would be that. Sweet. (laughs) Very nice. Mm -hmm. Um, So you've put the bar pretty high in terms of Mm. how open you are and how thought thought you are. Yes. Mm. Yes. I know. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Who who would be other athletes that you know of? Could be in football, could be any Mm. other sports uh, that you think have fantastic stories like yours or similar to, uh, oh, okay. to say on the podcast um i would say they're all, like all over i watch a lot of different sports i'd say uh israel adesanya uh mma fighter uh i like his story his journey is crazy he was in china i believe he was in uh what was it new zealand where he's now living and then he also flies to the states to compete in ufc Jeez. He teaches kickboxing and way back in New Zealand. He does a lot of stuff. I like I like seeing like a lot of diverse diversity in athletes and you know, there's like fearlessness as far as okay, well wherever I am, I'm gonna make sure that this works. You know what yeah. I mean? As long as there's water, food and a place to sleep, I'm gonna make this happen. I like yeah. those kind of people. Um in uh football, um I don't really know anymore. Tom Brady really stands out to me. A guy was drafted 199th, uh, sixth quarterback or seventh quarterback taken off the board in his year. Pretty much what that means is essentially they didn't really think he was that yeah. good. Uh, and then he ended up being the best player of yeah. all time. I think that's incredible in my mind. Um, and, uh, you know, to, for a smaller comparison, I don't compare myself to the <laughs> GOAT, but I was drafted second last. And I felt like when I was drafted, the notion around me, and there was noise, it was pretty much that, you know, you're probably going to be lucky if you make the team. And I said, God, no, hell no. Like, I'm going to make this team. There's no question about it. And I think that um, uh, that kind of is relatable with Tom Brady. Uh, and that's pretty much pretty much those two guys I've been – it changes all the time yeah. depending on where I am in my life. But they are the guys your, I look forward to, those are the two guys that I – hold up there and I say, you know what? I respect how you guys went about your business. Sweet. Yeah. Um, you seem to be pretty discreet on social media. I had a hard yeah. time initially finding <laughs> yeah. you. Are you, um, yeah. Is it something that you're working on? If you have uh, mm. a, a few places where people should follow you or not? Oh yeah. So yeah, media, I think obviously I, you know, I'm discreet now. I, I have moments where I like to be social when I'm, you know, in the grind, you can kind of tell yeah. I'm not really on it or I'm posting kind of just where I am right now, not fancy stuff. But yeah, like, I mean, uh, my my Instagram handle is uh, my last name, Sin Danny with three eyes. Uh, and then Twitter, it's just Sind, S-I-N-N-D-8. Uh, I hardly tweet. If I tweet, it's probably something controversial. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but yeah, no, I don't, I don't spend a whole lot of time on media. That's something that's a battle too. You know, I think media is addicting, especially when you're in sport in the world yep. of sport, you kind of want to keep up and see what everybody else is doing. I do that too much. So it's kind of something I'm backing away from nice. doing me, doing my own life, figuring out what I want to do. So 
That's yeah. kind of it's kind of okay, so media. not so active. Not so that's active. That's what I, no, I, no, I figured. No. <laughs> um, the last one is more of a personal question that I yeah. have usually. Uh, I showed you just before we started. I'm building in my mm. new office a wall of fame. Yeah. You have a few stuff or a, one stuff that you could put a signature on and add to that wall. Yeah, I do actually. I have a, a Hamilton Tiger Cats. Uh, uh, I guess cut off sleeve. Actually, <laughs> I don't know if you want it, but it's nice to hold on the Anything wall. Anything <laughs> that will look nice. Yeah, but I yeah, cut that, off the sleeves. Cool. It's a richy thing to do. Super. Uh, just <laughs> it's a workout shirt. It's clean. You can hang that up there and add wonderful. it to your collection. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much, Richie. Yeah. That was wonderful. Anything? Yeah. Any last word? Anything that we can wish you in the next? No, I, I just I appreciate what you're doing up here in Canada. I think that it's amazing to have media content uh, to get some of these athletes out there. I hope for more athletes to join your podcast and talk you have interesting questions i think it's it's a comfortable setting uh we get to go into a lot of how we came about to be in sport yep. there's only 38 million people in this country and i think that there's a small population that plays sport at a high level or even any other level it'd be nice to see a lot more people come on here awesome. so thank you so thanks thanks for having me here no in your uh, beautiful yep. uh, tower thank you very much <laughs> yeah